everyone. Today we're going to be drawing a flamingo. And I know it might look a little bit challenging, and honestly it is going to be a little bit challenging, um, but I'm hoping that it will be a little bit easier as I walk you through it and break it down into simple basic shapes. Um, it is our last project of the year for Art One, so I did save a more challenging project for last, but again, I think it'll be easier than it looks, and just take your time, and I'll walk you through it step by step. So let's get started. So I thought it would be helpful before we start if I show you how the flamingo is made up of very basic shapes. So I did this drawing to show you the basic shapes that it's made out of. So we have a circle for the head. We have a curvy triangle for the beak. We have this curved line, which is like a backwards S, or it's also like half of a number eight. So can you see that? It's like a big, tall, skinny number eight. And I just drew this line with pencil, a dotted line or a, a little dashes to represent that that line's going to get erased. Really all we need is half of the number eight. Okay, and then here we have two football shapes overlapping each other. And then just a simple straight line here and two lines bent forming a triangle. So those are the basic shapes that we're going to use for our flamingo. And I'm going to guide you step by step on how to draw this. Okay, so uh, here's my example again. You'll see that my paper is vertical. It's up and down. So make sure you have your sketchbook up and down or vertical. And I think the easiest way to start is by drawing a big number eight. So we're going to draw it, here's my example again, we're going to draw it on the left side of the paper. So if this is the center of my paper, it's going to be on the left side. See how it's on the left side? And we're just going to draw a big number eight. And make sure you press very lightly or don't press hard at all with your pencil because we want it to be as light as possible because we're going to erase some of it. So let's just go ahead and draw a big number eight. See how I drew a big number eight and it went about halfway down my paper so I could maybe fit two on my paper. That's how big it is. Okay. And once I have my number eight at the top on the left, so top left, I'm going to draw a circle. And this is going to be the flamingo's head. And the circle is about maybe the size of a ping pong ball or a golf ball, if you know what size that is. It's just a couple of inches. And so see how that's going to become the head of the flamingo. And so we're going to end up erasing this part and this part of the number eight but we have our neck here, the start of our neck and our head. So next we're gonna add the beak. And remember I said the beak was like a curvy triangle. See that, how it's a curvy triangle? Um, so we're gonna come up to the circle and we're gonna start maybe at this half way mark of the circle. So if you, you kind of put a, a line through the middle of the circle like that, that's about where our beak's going to start. And I'm just going to draw a big curved line coming down like this. Big curved line. Okay? Now, the beak on the flamingo, it curves down and you'll notice that it points actually back at the flamingo's own body. So this is different than like on the robin. Remember when we did the robin project, the beak pointed straight out. 
okay, straight out. But on the flamingo, the beak curves down and it's actually pointing back at its own body. So that's why we're drawing this big curved line. And then actually this is a perfect place to stop or to come back up to the head. So if you wanna just come back up like that for the beak, that would work out really well. All right. Now, uh, we want to draw the other side of our neck. So let's look again at the sample picture. The neck of the flamingo is very long and it's very skinny, right? And it's also very curvy. So we're just going to draw another side. Like that. See how I did that? And we're not gonna wor uh, worry about erasing too many lines yet. Um, we'll do most of our erasing after we've outlined with marker. But the one line we're gonna erase right now is this one in the center. So I'm gonna put this video on pause for a second and erase mine and you can go ahead and erase yours. All right, so I erased my line, hopefully you did too. And now right here, where the beak meets the circle, I'll zoom in a little closer here, we're gonna draw two curved lines like this. One, two. And we're ha make, making a point right here. So I curved in towards the center of the circle, I stopped, and then I drew another curved line right here. And at that point, that's where I'm gonna draw my circle for my for my eye, okay? That might be a little big, but that's okay. And then you just wanna make sure this circle is connected to the neck really well, and you might even raise it up a little bit because if you look at a, at a picture of a real flamingo or like in my sample drawing, you can see that his head kind of curves up quite a bit on the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curve up even more and make sure it connects really nice to, the, to his neck there. And I'm gonna add a little curve line right here. See how I did that? Just a little curve line so that this corner is not so sharp and pointy. Okay. Um, in the beak, we're gonna draw a line that curves down, right down the center until we get about here. And then I'm gonna curve off in both directions like that. So I'm going pretty fast. Again, if you need to pause the video and get caught up, why don't you go ahead and do that? So that's probably the hardest part of the project. And if this is too hard for you, um, you know, no worries, just do your best. And um, we're gonna move on to the body now and the body's gonna be quite simple. We're gonna use two football shapes and you guys know what, what the football shape is, right? It's a frown and a smile put together. So we're gonna do one big football shape and then a smaller one. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna do a big football shape right here and then a smaller football shape right here. Okay, so here's my first big football shape. All right, so see how it's like a frown and a smile, or just two really big curved lines. And now we're gonna put a smaller football shape right here. Now we've been using this football shape all year, haven't we? We used it when we drew the human eye. Um, we've, we've used it a lot of times. Um, so you guys should be very familiar with this shape. We're gonna draw another smaller one right here. Okay, so now I have two. And all I did at the ends is I added a few little feather 
little feather lines. So what I did is I just kind of came down and up and down and up and down and up like that, just a little bit or back and forth just to show a couple little feather lines. So if you want to try to do that, that would be great. And again, pause the video whenever you need to. All right, so now we're gonna add the legs to our flamingo. So flamingos often stand on one leg. So we're gonna try to draw it that way, where he's standing on one leg and his other leg is bent. So we're gonna start with just two very skinny straight lines, very, very skinny like that. And then there's kind of a fat bumpy part right in the middle of his leg, kind of like where his knee is, I guess you might say. It's not really a knee, but there's like a little joint there. So if you wanna just put two little two little lines like that, two little bent lines. You're almost, you're almost making like a diamond shape. You know what a diamond shape looks like? Okay, you're almost making like a diamond shape. And then we're gonna put his other leg right here and we're gonna make kind of a triangle. So see how this kind of forms a triangle? So if you want to even draw that first, if that helps you, then that probably will help you, just to make a triangle first. And then you can go ahead, and I'll get real close here, you can go ahead and add the other side of the leg. Like that. Okay, and all I did in the front is I came out a little bit and I drew kind of like a little foot um, hanging down. So I'll show you how I drew that. I just came down and I did a little curve line and I came back up. Okay, so really that is all the drawing we're gonna do on the flamingo the rest is going to be coloring outlining and coloring and so I know that was maybe kind of hard for some of you but hopefully it wasn't too hard this is officially um, the last project of the year so uh, we've been trying to you know gradually get a little bit more difficult a little more challenging with each project and hopefully you feel like you have gotten better and, and improved in your drawing skills throughout the year. All right, so let's get ready to outline and color. You're gonna need some markers and some colored pencils. So what's really interesting about flamingos is I guess they are born um, either a gray or a white color and it takes about three years before they start to turn um, that pink color. And uh, some flamingos look really pink and some look more orange. And so you might have noticed that I used both of those colors in my flamingo. I used both orange and pink. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But I decided I'm gonna outline my flamingo with an orange marker. You might want to outline yours in pink. That's totally fine. You can decide which color you want to use. And so now I'm going to go over my lines, but I'm not going to outline any of the lines that I want to erase. For example, this line I'm going to want to erase and not outline. And if that's hard for you to remember, and if you get a little confused, well then you're going to need to erase that first. Okay, so go ahead and erase that first if it's going to confuse you and you're going to forget. But um, otherwise, you can just go ahead like this 
and outline the lines that you want to save. And then when you're done, you can go back and erase right over your marker, as long as it's Sharpie. Sometimes if it's um, like Crayola markers or Rose Art or some other kind of real watery, um, water-based marker that's not a permanent marker, sometimes your marker will smear if you erase uh, right away on top of the marker. So I'm gonna outline my flamingo. I'll show you real quick uh, the parts that are not gonna get outlined in orange are the bottom part of the beak. Okay, the bottom part of the beak I'm gonna outline in black. This part right here. And if you want, this is such a small space, you can go ahead and even color it in with your black marker instead of using colored pencil. If there's a very small area, then it's okay to color it in with, with a Sharpie or marker. But if it's gonna be a really big area like the rest of his body, I would do that in colored pencil. The other thing that's gonna be black is his eye. And if you want, you can just put a little black dot like that in his eye. And then the only other thing that is not gonna be outlined in pink or orange will be his legs. And I'm gonna do his legs with brown. Okay, so I'm gonna take a brown marker and outline the legs, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna finish outlining mine. You can put the video on pause and go ahead and outline yours. So here's what it looks like after I'm done outlining, but I have not yet erased my pencil line. So if I get real close, you can see that I still have a lot of little pencil lines showing. Okay, so I'm zooming in real close, especially on the head. See all those lines? So at this point, before I start coloring with colored pencil, I'm gonna want to clean up my artwork and erase all these lines. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Why don't you pause the video and you can go ahead and do it too. All right, so now I've erased all my pencil lines. My artwork is all cleaned up. I'll zoom in real close so you can see. And hopefully you did not press hard with your pencil. And that way you're able to erase and it won't show up. So we've been working on that all year long, haven't we? We've been really trying to not press hard with our pencil while we're drawing. And you've heard me say that probably a million times, <laughs> but um, it's really important to remember that. So hopefully you were able to erase your pencil lines. And now we're gonna start to color. So you can color your flamingo pink, you can color it orange or peach, or you can do what I did and use several different colors. So it just depends on how much coloring you wanna do and um, maybe how many different colors you have at home. Here's a collection of some different pinks. So you could do dark pink or light pink um, or dark orange or light orange, like a peach. And um, besides just coloring the body of the flamingo, I also wanted to show you on the beak, if you have a light orange or a peach color, you can color half of this space very lightly. So maybe halfway up but then leave the top part of the beak white. Okay, so you can just stop halfway. So I'll show you on my original sample. See how I left that space white? And then go ahead and color the rest of his body. And again, you can just use one color um, or you can use two. Okay, so what I did, or even three, what I did is I colored it pink 
like this. And then when I was done, I went over it with like a peachy color. Okay, or you could use orange. And then I have two colors. Okay, but I know it takes a lot of patience to color. It takes a lot of time. So if that's too much for you, you can just stick with one color. Also on the legs, I use just a tan color. So if you have a light brown or a tan, you can color his legs. Just like that. Okay, so you go ahead and color your flamingo and I'm gonna go ahead and color mine. Okay, so I finished coloring my flamingo. And another interesting thing I learned about flamingos is the reason they turn this color is from uh, their diet. It's what they eat that eventually turns them this color. So that's very interesting too. Um, another thing is we always want to remember to color in the same direction, right? So if our pencil's moving in this direction, we want to keep moving in that direction. In fact, this would be a good direction because um, the flamingo has feathers. And so if we're going in this direction, that's kind of the same direction that the feathers would be going. So when you're done coloring, a lot of times you see the pencil lines and I'm gonna zoom in really close and you can kind of see my lines, right? You can see my lines that are going this way, but that's okay because I think it almost helps it look like feathers, right? It gives it a little bit of texture. Okay, so there's one last thing we're gonna do on our Flamingo project. And we're gonna add um, a simple pattern to the background. And on this one, I thought it would be uh, fun to do swirls. So you don't have to do swirls. You can do another simple pattern, but we do wanna keep it simple. And if you remember doing the Easter basket project with me, um, we talked about that when we did the Easter basket project. We talked about keeping the background pattern simple and not wanting it to be distracting from the main star of the project. The main focus of the project is the flamingo, right? So we don't wanna do something so crazy in the background that it's distracting from the main star of the show. The main star of this show is the flamingo. So I would pick just one simple pattern like polka dots or swirls or some other very simple pattern, maybe tiny little hearts or something like that. So um, I'll go ahead and do swirls again because I really like how the swirls look. And so I think it would be good to do it in green. If you want to choose a different color, that's fine. But I really liked the, uh, the combination of the green and the, the pinks and the, the orangey pinks. And you might know that uh, on the color wheel, We've talked about color in class throughout the year. Red and green are complementary colors. And pink and orange are both colors that are made from red. Did you know that? They're both made from red. So orange is made by mixing red with yellow and pink is made from mixing red with white. So anyway, and I'm using kind of a yellowy green color, so it's, anyway, it just creates kind of a, it's really a complementary color mix here that we're, that we're doing. And I'm just drawing swirls all over my background.
I would recommend just going ahead and doing it in marker and not worrying about doing it in pencil first because it's just going to take you a lot longer to do it in pencil first and then have to trace everything. I would just do it in marker. And you might notice, like see how I put a swirl right there in this space and up here I did half a swirl. I want you to kind of think of this as wallpaper. You're almost creating wallpaper behind your flamingo. So you wanna make sure that you don't leave big empty spaces. Like right here, even though that's a small space, I wouldn't try drawing a teeny tiny swirl to squeeze it in there. Instead, what I would do is draw the swirl the same size as all these other swirls, but I would do kind of like a half swirl. So I pretend that the swirl is going off the edge of the page. Okay, and hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so that's it for our Flamingo project. And the very, very last thing you might wanna do is sign your artwork down at the bottom. Oops, it's hard for me to sign with one hand because I'm holding the camera with the other. <laughs> I'll finish signing it in a minute. But you can see I signed this one down in the corner. Okay, so I would love to see your flamingos when you're done. And take your time. I know this, this project is a hard one. It's a challenging project, but it's our last one of the year. So give it a good try. And I would love to see them when you're done. So I hope you had fun doing the flamingo with me. And I hope you had fun being in Art One this year. I had a lot of fun doing projects with you and I hope that you feel like you've learned a lot about art. I hope you feel like you've grown as an artist and gotten better this year. And remember, I always tell you, the more you practice, the better you'll get and the more you'll grow in confidence. So keep practicing over the summer, keep drawing, and I hope you all have a wonderful summer.